Hello friends, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be working with Martha at Martha Makes Arts beautiful digital kit called Cats and Cupcakes. Martha and I are actually doing a little bit of a collaboration. I'm using one of her digital kits to create a journal and she is using one of my digital kits to create a journal. And we will both be uploading our flip throughs on the same day. Mark your calendar for April 17th so that you can catch both of our flip throughs. This beautiful kit is available through Martha's website and I will be sure to link that in my description box. As you can see when I fold the papers in half that I have printed her digital kit out on the back of scrapbook paper. You can see here that I stayed with light pinks and also pastels. I'm going to share with you some of the other goodies that I am going to use in the journal. All of this came from my stash. You could see that there was a vintage playing card with a cat on it, and these are images from a magazine that I happen to have. I believe I got this magazine at the library, but if not at the library, then I picked it up at the thrift store. And here are some papers that I bought, geez, at least a couple of years ago, and I'm going to see if I can work some of these into this sweet journal as well. I typically do all of my embellishing before I sew my signatures into a journal, but this journal I'm going to do a little bit differently. But before I sew it in, I am going to add some of these cat images to the pages. But when I'm done with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and sew it together and then finish the embellishing. Like I said, that's really different than I usually do it. But, you know, everybody has their own way of doing it. So I've seen people do it both ways. And it's really just whatever you're comfortable with. I think these adorable images of the cats make a really great splash on these pages. When I originally cut the image, I cut it a little bit big because I'd rather cut it a little bit big than too small. So I just had to trim up the edge where there was a little bit of an overhang. Now I have this piece. This is from a magazine. And what you see here are small prints of magazine covers. And these are tiny. They're like maybe two inches tall, maybe an inch wide. I mean, maybe slightly bigger than that, but I don't really think so. At any rate, I thought these would be perfect tiny ephemera. Once I get these all cut, I'm going to go ahead and back them onto some of the leftover cardstock that I have, like the off cuts from where I made the pages for the journal. I figured what I would do to make this hopefully a little bit quicker was to take one piece of scrapbook paper, an off cut like I mentioned, and glue these little tiny magazine covers to it. And then I can fussy cut those out but at least they'll all be in one place. They are cut and dry, so now I'm going to go ahead and ink up the edges. The next time you guys see these little cuties, they will be in the journal. Now I want to go ahead and work on making the journal cover. This is going to be a one signature journal, and I'm going to use this scrap piece of scrap paper. And I'm going to cover it with this beautiful fabric that I have. The first thing I need to do is measure the scrapbook paper up against the journal signature. I always like to make the cover a little bit bigger than the pages, just like when you see a hard, uh, what do we call that? A hard bound book, like a hard cover. The, the, the hard cover is always bigger than the pages. Now a soft cover is not like that. It's usually the same, but on a hard cover it is. So at any rate, I always leave a little bit of extra all the way around. Before I add the fabric that I showed you, I want to go around all of the edges with this beautiful lace. I am using my Fabri-Tac, but just so you know, you could sew it into place or you could use hot glue. Once this is on, 
and dry, I'm going to measure the length and the width so that I know how large I want to cut my piece of fabric. So I wanted to show you what I did so far to create the cover. I can't remember how much of the cover I showed you before I started on it, because then my family piled into the craft studio and I wanted to keep working but couldn't really focus. At any rate, I turned off the camera. So I took a piece of paper and I think you saw that part. <laughs> and I cut actually two of these and I think I might have shown you that part. I ended up not putting this one on because I liked the paper just fine without it. So it, it would have been this with perhaps some trim around it or that, which I am going to add some trim. But, and I'm, we'll do that on camera, but I just was wanted to show you this part first. So then on this side, you can see the lace, obviously, and then I added the blue lace, and then I added the pink, so I had white and pink. I added the pink on there, because I think that that's gonna go so good with like the feeling of the cupcakes and the flowers and all of that. So that's what I've done so far for the cover. And I originally was gonna use this for the outside, but I feel, like I really might wanna use this for the outside. So I'm gonna fold it now in, I had folded it already, but now I'm gonna fold it in the opposite direction. I wanna make sure I get the fold in the right place. All right, so if this is how it's gonna look on the outside, I really like it. And hopefully, yeah, I folded it in the right place, so we're good there. So now what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna leave this as is, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add some of this trim. So I'm gonna measure out about how much I need. And give myself a little to play on, a little extra. And I'll put that aside. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use hot glue to adhere it. I'm gonna tack these little corners down. They're a little bit loose, no big deal. Just gonna tack them down. This one's fine and this one's fine. These were just a little bit, whoops. These were just a little bit bigger. All right, now uh, let's see. We could do it that this is the bottom corner or we could put it in the back. You know what, let's do that. That's kind of nice in the front. So I want to make sure I like that. Let's make this the back actually, just because there's no problem here, but that's the lace went all the way around and this is the end of it. So, and I can cover that with an embellishment so it would end up being up here. But I think I'd rather just have that on the back and not worry about it and have this on the front. So actually, that will be the back page, which is perfectly fine. Now with this, this is pretty bulky. So I'm thinking about going around, starting here at the center, but leaving a little space, going up and around and stopping, leaving the center without it so that we don't have any issues with the journal opening and closing and then cutting a fresh piece and going around so just leaving a little bit of space right there I think that's the right call to you know I think that's the right call because I think it it will be better off in the end if we do it like that For those of you that are new and you want to know how to sew a signature into your journal, you got your papers, they're in order, the order that you want. You've got your cover done. Do not do your cover. 
Do not sew your stuff into your cover until it's done. You can decorate the outside more, but you want to make sure the inside's done because once this is sewn in, it's not so easy to go back in and add some things that you might want in there. You could add a pocket here, but as far as embellishments go, you might want to get that done first. All right, then take three lengths of your journal and you're going to cut that. You're going to want to use an awl and a big needle. Thread your wax thread. Now there's all kinds of ways to do this, but the one I'll make sure that you know is make sure your pages aren't upside down. Give it a quick look. Make sure everything looks the way that you want it to. Also, if this was more than one signature, I would be marking this with dots before I put my holes, but one signature is super easy to do and you don't need to go to the trouble of marking anything. So what I like to do, also something to think about is know where your, like a lot of this is lace, so I want this centered and this is especially important if you're doing more than one signature. One is not so bad, but in if this was two, for example, let, let me take a piece of paper out and let's pretend this was two. You want to make sure they're even. Like you don't you you don't want to make you don't want to let one be a little bit higher than the other. So it's a small detail that you could get wrong if you weren't paying attention. You were just hyper focused on the holes and all that. So you want to make sure when you put it in there that you put them in evenly and one's not higher or lower than the other. I know that sounds so like ridiculously simple and obvious, but trust me when you're hyper focused on doing something else, you can lose that detail. So I've got this centered the way, the way I want it. I, you can see that I felt it. There's got a lot of fluff around here, so uh, it's a little bit more difficult when there's fluff, so you just want to know where your cardstock is or whatever you're making your cover out of. Mine is, is covered with all this, so I just have to double check by feeling it with my fingers. So I've got this where I want it. We know obviously my holes are going to go in this line because that's the fold line. I've got these positioned the way that I want. And now I'm gonna take my awl, and I'm gonna put my awl basically in the center of this. I'm gonna pop my hole through. Okay, now once that's through, I'm gonna go ahead and find, make sure I've got this right, okay. And now I'm finding my center. Now again, if I was doing more than one signature, I might be using a template or something to mark it. But you can practice doing this with one signature and you don't really have to mark anything. So I, I did the hole in both, and now I'm popping this through my needle, see it? And now I'm actually gonna leave my needle right there and it holds everything together. If you want, you can use uh, paper clips or clothes pins or whatever to hold everything together. But I have found for me with just one signature, I don't really have to do that. So now I'm gonna do, put while this is holding, while my needle is holding everything stable, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare for my second hole. So I'm popping it through the journal pages first. There we go. And now I've got it where I want it on here and now I'm going to pop it through here. All right, and there it is. You can see it. There's my needle and then there's my awl. Now I'm grabbing this here to hold everything steady because sometimes when you pull this out and there's material, it's hard to find the hole. This one I can see, so that's going to be easy, no problem. So you put it through there and there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that so everything can lay flat and get ready to add my third one, which I think I'll do right down here. That looks good. If yours starts to shift, you can pull your thread tight, sort of get everything back in place before you make that third hole. OK, 
Okay, I'm stabbing that through with my, my awl. Now I'm gonna hold this real tight, pulling this one up. Now I'm going through the third one. All right, now that's the easy part, believe it or not. I find that the most difficult part is going back through here. But again, with one signature, it's not that big of a deal. So you see the hole. I'm gonna push this through. If we get lucky, we'll get through the pagers. I'm not gonna get lucky. And that's okay, I can see my needle, so now I'm just going to flip through each page one by one and make sure that the needle is through the page. And so right here is where we start with it's not. So I have found it, and let me see, and you can go one by one, it's no big deal. Just take your time. You know, it's a lot of times the needle doesn't feed right back through. So going page by page is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And there we go, we are to the center. I'm gonna push that through pull my wax thread through. So you're gonna notice this is my center line and you'll notice both of my wax threads are on this side. So you're gonna to wanna to take one, pop it right underneath your center. So now you've got one on each side of this center line. Now you wanna pull these tight. If they're not tight, your pages will be loose and you won't like that. All right, now I went through my wax thread right there, but I went ahead and pulled that out. Everything's fine. Yeah, if you do that, if you pop through your other wax thread, just do what I did and, and undo it. So pulling taut here, but then pick the, grab, grab this, pinch this, flip it over and check it here. Okay, this is perfect. If it was gonna move to one side or the other, you gotta pull it tighter. And now you're gonna knot it. You're gonna knot it the normal way you would do a knot and then do the opposite. So for me, I usually take this, wrap it like that and go under this way. So for the second one, I have to do it the opposite way. So what I like to do is pretend I'm doing it my normal way and then just switch this one over. <laughs> and then I always do one more the way I always do it. So I do a triple knot and then I learned this a long time ago. Take something and press your knot down and it melds the, the waxes together a little bit so that your wax thread doesn't come undone. And there we go, all right. So we've got our pages sewn into our journal, and here is how it looks prior to embellishing and adding pockets and goodies and lace and all that kind of stuff. Friends, I wanted to show you the basics of how I put a journal together. Now, remember in the beginning we went through all the goodies that I had, and so I'll show these to you one more time. Now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna put all this stuff, or at least most of it, into the little journal. The next time you see this journal, it will be fully decorated and I'll be doing a flip through of it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this process video and if you've never made a journal before, I hope you give it a try because it's so much fun. Thanks for watching, see you soon.